When AB5 was signed into law, one of the things that Uber had to do was they had to cap the commission fee at 25%. No longer could it be somewhere between 10 to 70 or even 80% of the fare that was going to Uber. It was just 25% period. And I praise this as like being a way more transparent. Um, this was much more transparent with the drivers. It was much more honest. I appreciated this, and this was one of the good things that AB5 actually did for drivers for Uber. Lyft has kind of been slow to it. I, there's a whole complicated reason why Lyft hasn't really done anything, but anyway. However, it has come to um, court's attention that Uber is not entirely being honest about this. In fact, some people have been asking me on live streams, is Uber taking more than 25% of the ride? And unfortunately, the answer is yes. And they are doing so by having a hidden marketplace fee that you are not aware of and you don't even see, which does raise some serious ethical questions once again about transparency and whether I, I, and whether or not you, you are actually an independent contractor or employee. This is, this is going to be a really complicated one. But anyway, before we begin... Hi everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here and I'm to really like this video, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification. We upload videos on a near daily basis. We do stories, commentary, editorials, opinions, live streams, podcast premieres, all that jazz. And you'll want to be notified of all of it because a lot of it is really good in my humble opinion. So anyway, this article is from Quartz and it's written by Michelle Chang who did a very, very, very good job on it. And the, it's titled Uber's new California commission caps only underscore the pricing up, up ugh, sorry, I'm stuttering. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering on that one. I'm sorry, folks. For drivers, we're just going to skip that word. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm struggling with that word. In response to AB5, the new California labor law that makes it harder for employers to classify workers in the state as independent contractors, Uber in January capped its service fee on Uber X rides in California at 25%, which, yay, that's good. It was one of several changes, uh, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with the O's, I'm sorry, folks, made to give drivers greater transparency and a sense of autonomy meant to reinforce their non-employee status. The fee cap is part of how Uber tells its drivers it wants to, quote, make the fare structure more straightforward, but it's clear where your earnings and fees come from. But there's still a lot about Uber's pricing that drivers can't see. Uber collects a marketplace fee, separate from the maximum 25% service fee, which means the total commission is a lot higher. Some estimate the company's real commission to be as high as 40%. Great. Great, we're back to 40%. We're back to almost half the earnings being taken by Uber. Wonderful. Just absolutely wonderful. And here's, here's the kicker. And Uber has dropped this fee from its driver's receipts, meaning drivers have less than perfect insight into how much the ride-hailing giant is taking per ride. What happened to being transparent about all of this, Uber? What happened to, hey, we, what happened to AB5 forcing these companies to be upfront about what was being charged and what was being doled out? Uh, frankly, if themes that Uber's just gone back to what it's doing, like they said, okay, it's only 25%, and if you look at your receipts, it's true, but now there's like a fee, another fee that we are not being told about. I remember the first time this happened and there was a long distance um, charge or something like that. I forgot exactly what it was, but I mean Uberman first commented on this. And there was like an extra charge that the passenger paid and the person emailed Uber asking about it and they said this is not the driver's concern and he correctly assumed that we probably weren't supposed to know about it. And I think this is the same thing here. Um, they added a fee. And they don't tell us about it because they don't want to give us any of that. And it continues that Uber has been quietly raising its marketplace fee, now around $3 per ride in California for years. It is a flat fee added to all of Uber's economy car services, XXL pool to cover operational costs. It varies per ride and differs in each city. And by the way, from what I'm understanding, this is different 
from, oh wait, no, it's not, it's not. So, oh, by the way, Harry, Harry Campbell's here, and, um, you know, so yeah, it's always fun to read about Harry here. The Marketplace Commission was first introduced in 2014 as a safe ride fee, so this was what I think it is, of $1 per ride to cover costs such as background checks for driver's insurance and vehicle checks. But employees reportedly said the fee was never, quote, earmarked specifically for safety and was instead devised to boost margins, according to an ex excerpt from New York Times reporter Mike Isaac's book, Super Pump the Battle for Uber. By the way, me and Harry did a, um, did a live discussion about that book. I'll try to include the link in a title card. Definitely worth reading that book and checking out that conversation. By the time the safe ride fee became fodder for a court battle in 2016, the company had already collected nearly $500 million in revenue from it. The case was sold for $27 million and Uber changed the name from a safe ride fee to a booking fee. More recently, the name was updated to Marketplace Fee. It's not uncommon for drivers to compare the fares they see on their app with that of their passengers seeing, which would help them to detect any variations in fares. In a screenshot of a trip taken in January in Los Angeles, the total fare on the driver's receipt left is $14.17, while the total fare of the driver's receipt right is $11.60. The difference of $3.10 is the marketplace fee. So there's a screenshot, as you can see, and you know they're def they're, they are wisely covering some of the, and, and like, there you go, the service fee, fee. It's um, you know there's a sir, that that's ridiculous. Uh, well, here's a service fee, the tip, your earnings, fare. So yeah, that's interesting. So. Because they paid four fourteen dollars seventy cents. Yep, no, that's pretty much correct. So, uh, yeah, that definitely brought it down. Um, after fees were deducted, the th and the three dollar tip added, the driver earned twelve dollars cents. Okay, and here, here's um what the driver had to say. If they were not hiding that, I would not be nearly as upset. If they were just honest about it, I would not care as much. And here's why this matters, by the way. I mean, it's not only that they're hiding and being dishonest about it. But here's the thing, whenever they raise that fee, the passengers pay it and that's gonna affect your tip. And tips are more important than ever. With the fares as low as they are, you really need tips and Uber passengers don't tip nearly as much as they should. They just don't because Uber did the no tipping thing long enough that it's still kind of considered common knowledge, even though it's not, it's not the way it is anymore, that you don't have to tip your Uber driver. Now, the article continues that it's hard to say whether the average driver is earning less than they believe they should be making, but the revenue line items on driver's receipts, which break down what's being deducted, is one way to look into this. Dropping the marketplace fee from the driver's receipts is a way for Uber to charge riders more without splitting it with the drivers, says Harry Campbell. Uber says the fee still appears on driver's receipts outside of California. Oh, interesting. Only in California, huh? The change in California was made in response to AB5. In, in essence, it helps clarify that Uber considers the fee information to be essential only to the rider and the company, and that drivers as non-employees are not part of that particular equation. Really? Rival Lyft, meanwhile, shows a breakdown of earnings on a weekly basis, which includes a service expense, the equivalent of Uber's market fee. None of this is to say that Uber hasn't responded to some of the changes drivers have been wanting, such as being able to see where passengers are going, and what the estimated earnings will be before agreeing to take them. So, yeah. I agree, but here's the thing. The booking fee, which goes straight to the company, is perhaps something Uber has been leaning on to help make up for the losses. And Campbell says, I think if we look at sort of the history of the booking fee, that's exactly what they've done. They've never done anything crazy with it, but just over time, they've slowly increased it, and obviously they have a lot of mandates to become profitable. Yeah, kind of like how Disneyland constantly raises fees. So anyway, um, it ends with saying providing benefits like health insurance and a minimum wage to California workers reclassified as employees under AB5 would be costly for the ride hailing business, which is trying for but has not yet succeeded in getting an exemption from the new law. As a result, the changes Uber is making in response to AB5 to strengthen its stance on maintaining worker flexibility will likely continue. Yeah, but they need to be honest about this. That's the thing. They just need to be honest about this. But again, if they. If they report this, then yes, they probably would have to split the fare with the driver. I, I'm going to acknowledge that. But now here's like another question. Are they allowed to exclude this to not pay anything from the driver? In fact, considering <laughs> how AB5 went down, I think there might be a case to be made that, you know, this should not happen. Because then what's to stop Uber or Lyft 
from creating separate service fees that's like, hey, this is not part of the fare, so we're not even telling the driver about it. And then before you know it, Uber's collecting like five to ten dollars extra per ride that the driver should be entitled to some of that, but they're not. I mean, here's the thing, the marketplace fee, I mean, I'm having a hard time at Magic because here's the thing, the way it's kind of going is like, okay, Uber gets 25%, that's the cap, that's their fare. But then there's a marketplace fee and it's like, well, wait, shouldn't the fee be part of the 25%? Like what is going on here, of course? And I think it's someone's gonna sue over this and we're gonna have to watch the courts sort it out because that's what we do here. Uber does something they wanna do, drivers and riders don't like it, and then Uber gets sued and then we have to figure out exactly what the fallout will be. Either way, I'm sure you know which side I'm on. I'm on the driver side and the rider side for that matter. I don't think Uber should be doing this. I don't. Uh, thank goodness this rider, by the way, gave the driver five stars and a tip. Thank you for doing that. Everyone needs to rate five stars and give a tip. In very rare cases, you know, complain to Uber, but most drivers do a good job, even if you don't think, even if they didn't give you a bottle of water. But anyway, that's where we're gonna leave this one. What do you all think about this story? I would really like to know, comment below. The comments really do help, and I've actually been responding to more comments these days. I've kind of missed interacting with you guys as much, so I've been commenting a lot more. So yeah, I would like to know what you have to think about. What do you think about this? Do you think they should be hiding this? Or do you think there's actually a case we made for the drivers are not part of this equation and so we should they should really not worry about this? I, I would like to know what your thoughts on it are. So anyway, you know the drill. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.